this hemicycle today. I'm very glad, and this is a very important debate, so I'm glad to hear the views of everything and everyone. But if, uh, I'm sorry, but if you take all the catch the eyes at the end and all those that enter in the room speak, it's not fair, not only for me, because president change, but I'm here for seven hours in a row. And it's not fair for the following debate, that is a very important one. So I apologize, but this might uh, mean that at a certain point of the next debate, that is very important, uh, Fotiga's uh, uh, report uh, on, uh, um, on uh, um, EU strategic communication uh, will be obviously squeezed uh, probably a bit. Uh, I, I think this is not fair to our way of working. So, sorry, but I had to make the points. Um, First, uh, I uh, would like to stress the fact that uh, indeed the report is, is excellent. The work we are doing on common security and defence policy is not uh, done because of uh, the UK referendum. Uh, I understand our uh, friends from the UK might think that everything turns around uh, this, but the global strategy was prepared and presented during uh, uh, the previous year and presented just the day after uh, the result of the referendum. It is done and it is a work we have to do because the security of our citizens need this. And as long as the UK is in the European Union, this is a work that is going on at 28 altogether. It also strikes me a bit uh, that exactly uh, our colleagues uh, uh, that uh, um, would like to uh, or have indicated that their country uh, will uh, leave the European Union are the ones that feel so strongly about uh, the future of the European Defence Corporation. Uh, and also I understand that some uh, would like to stay plugged in. You will sort it out among yourself what you want to do in the future, then we will discuss together. But for sure the European Union will continue uh, to uh, implement the decisions we have taken already. As I said, at 28, I'm glad about that. Uh, on concrete, ambitious steps to strengthen common security and defence policy. It's not about EU army, it's not about duplication with NATO. NATO is perfectly happy with what we're doing because this is a way of strengthening also NATO. We're working hand in hand together. It's not about building new big headquarters, it's about being effective with the instruments we could have tomorrow if political will is put in place, Financial resources are dedicated, and it's not about spending more necessarily, it's about spending smarter. Because in times of budget constraints, some of you mentioned this, the only way for Europeans to invest smartly in defence is doing it together. So, as the European Union is helping, supporting, accompanying member states in many fields to the advantage of European citizens, from agriculture to infrastructures, I don't want to enter in other issues here, we can do the same on defence and make it more effective, more constructive, easier for member states to work effectively in uh, defence. Because no member state alone, some of you mentioned this, can face security challenges today, uh, if not in cooperation, and our security is interconnected. We have seen it in the last months, in the last year and a half, Whenever we face a, a serious security threat in one of our member states, it's all European citizens that can be uh, targeted. So we have a collective responsibility, yes, to uh, work on our security together. Um, the integrated approach, soft power and hard power together, the European way, is what will be uh, more and more done. So it's not about choosing the hard power versus the soft power. Actually, the European Union is the only, the only actor, the only player in the world that can use both the hard power and the soft power instruments in an integrated manner. And again, NATO is the first to recognize that we have instruments that NATO as a military alliance don't have. Uh, so I will continue to work uh, in a very committed way together with the Parliament to advance this agenda in a very pragmatic but also very ambitious manner. This is, uh, for me, also a test uh, to the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, to me, uh, some say yeah, I have two hats, actually it's three, and I will use the three of them in this work, supported, I hope, by the European Parliament. As a head of the European Defence Agency, as the Vice President of the Commission for the Commission competencies on the industrial and research part of it, and for sure as High Representative, as Chair of the Council, both in the Foreign Affairs uh, and the Defence Minister's uh, formation. Thank you.
Our reporter, Ioan Mircea Pașcu. Uh, two minutes, take a floor, please. Thank you. Um, I would uh, say that whatever you, High Representative, would say about the European Army, that it's not feasible, it's not on the radar, whatever you would say about, uh, um, for instance, the headquarters, it doesn't matter. Some people want to, to refer to this because this is the only way to attack. So therefore, you know, sometimes I'm really wonder if we, wondering if we really transmit the right message or what kind of a message should we transmit because, you know, the right one and most explicit one is not taken seriously. So this is uh, apart from the... Mr. Van Orden, who is a... Uh, a convinced pessimist with respect to <laughs> European defense, and uh, he stays like that until the end, uh, is, um, is somehow ignoring, you know, the fact that in Mali, for instance, we also fought, and probably in the future, Africa would be an area of responsibility where we'll have to fight. So therefore, you know, from this point of view, I wouldn't be so uh, uh, dismissive about this possibility. Um, our friend from, uh, from the UKIP party uh, is, um, is trying, you know, to tell us or to tell me as the author what I didn't say and is attacking me on that. Well, you know, I'm not a British citizen to be told, you know, the reasons why we should leave the European Union with lies. Uh, for instance, you know, that subversion is fought with the European soldiers. It's not fought like this. Uh, subversion is fought, you know, with the means there, that there are military who counter the propaganda which is used, you know, for subversion. That's a different story. But I would say, you know, that uh, from this point of view, many things have to be accepted as inevitable. Uh, I'm very glad that Mr. Butikofer, who has been my, shall we say, You have to come to the end. I'm sorry. Act, uh, up. Sorry, please allow me to conclude this. We're running, sorry, we're running very late in time, and I ask you to just finalize. Thank you. <laughs> no, but um, I always look very... Sorry? No. Colleague Pasco, if you can do it like in 20 seconds, that's fine, yeah? No, it's not enough for me. I've got a list of how many time is, is, um, is given to each group and each MEP, and we're running very late in time, and I do that. If my predecessor doesn't do that, that's... Not my fault. I try to adhere to the time that is uh, given to each speaker. So, you don't want to have the floor anymore? Okay. Then um, I'll switch to German. The Aussprache is damit geschlossen und die Abstimmung findet morgen statt. Yes, and now I have some um, information to give you from the president.